It's okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, here is a quite different subject because it deals with uh, MIMO, uh, telecommunication systems. Because MIMO, it means that there is a large number of uh, transmitting antennas on one side and also as a receiving side. Thus, it is a compromise. So uh, this work has been done in cooperation between the University of Cartagena in Spain and the University of Lille in France. Thus, uh, we will consider here a massive MIMO that made a large number of uh, an array elements as a transmitter, thus in work, you know. Thus it is a special case, and uh, we will present simulation in presence of tracks or in case of an empty tunnel and compared to experimental results. So the transmitting array is a square array of 64 elements, and the transmitting frequency is around 5.9 gigahertz. We will sort of study the correlation between array elements between either vertically aligned versus horizontally aligned because correlation has a very great influence on the capacity of the link. We will see the influence of the road traffic and we will see also that there is a need of the optimization of the way of partitioning the massive array into small sub-arrays. Just in order to have the best compromise between a high capacity but versus the complexity of the system. And lastly, we will study the stationarity of the channel when the receiver moves along the tunnel. So that is the configuration of a tunnel. It's a two-lane tunnel. You have the dimension here. And the dis maximum distance between the transmitter and receiver is about one kilometer. And in the simulation, as you will see, the conductivity of the bulbs is assumed to be 10 to the minus 2 Siemens per meter and a permittivity of 5. Thus, on the, the figure, you have an idea of the transmitting array. Thus, as I told you, it is an array of 64 patch antennas with a vertical polarization. The element spacing is 2.5 centimeters, uh, about half a wavelength. Thus, during night, the tunnel is nearly empty. Thus, we can, of course, make simulation and experiment. And during the day, for in the afternoon, there is a large number of tracks moving only in one lane. Thus, and in the simulation, we have assumed that there are 20 tracks which are equally spaced 40 meters, and each track is simulated with a metallic polybiped. I agree that it is a rather rough simulation, but in order to have an idea. So now on the mobile array, so on the other lane, there is a car moving on the other lanes, and you see that above this one, it's more precisely a van rather than a car. There are eight biconical vertical antennas with an element spacing of uh, 7.5 centimeters. Thus, for the simulation, we use a relaunching technique, which is use a graphics processing unit. And uh, the idea is simple, Sim means that meaning that all rays that hit a receiver sphere, which is around the real receiver, uh, are added, uh, of course, in amplitude and phase. And uh, we can also determine the three component field distribution. Thus, in our application, our model of a track is rather rough because it is a metallic box. Thus, in this case, we have not taken the diffraction on the edge of this box into account because there is not Real, real, in real condition. Thus, in this simulation, the track is only an obstacle. Thus, for the channel sounder, with the data modulation, is an UF, use an UFTM technique, and there are about 8,000 subcarriers with a subcarrier spacing of 12 kilohertz. Here, this curve represents the mean receive power, referred to an arbitrary value, along the tunnel either in an empty tunnel without track, with tracks, that is experimental result, uh, theoretical result, sorry, the blue and the red curve, and the green curve with the measurements in presence of tracks. Thus you see that we have a rather good agreement between theory and experiments, and that is the average receive power. Why? Because we have made an averaging 
over the 64 transmitting elements, the eight receiving elements, and 32 frequencies within the uh, HT megahertz band, which is the bandwidth of the channel sounder. At large, this land we see is that the presence of drugs gives an attenuation, an additional attenuation of 8 dB. And these curves can be compared, can be modeled by a two slope curves be before and beyond 600 meters. And uh, here we have calculated the slope of these two parts of the curves, thus in these two regions, in order to compare simulation and measurements. And we see that the agreement is quite correct. Now, an important point is the correlation between the TXRE elements. Indeed, we see the, these elements could be either, there are horizontal aligned and vertically aligned, but the tunnel is rectangular, so there is no symmetry. And now we have calculated the correlation between two successive elements, or between one and the second one, and so on. So the spacing between these elements are choose either 2.5 centimeters, 5 or 75 centimeters. And that, has, that is a correlation coefficient between these two elements, either on an horizontal line or on a vertical line. What can we conclude? First, the correlation globally increases with the distance. It's a quite very well-known result. It is due to the fact that at large distance, the rays have a grazing angle of incidence on the wall, and this gives rise to a large correlation. But the most important thing is a correlation is quite different if you consider horizontal aligned or vertically aligned. Indeed, in the, if the uh, vertical on a vertical line, you see that the correlation is very near one, is a 0 0.99. So there is an important consequence, as you will see in the following. In case of presence of strikes, because uh, the last slide for, was for an empty tunnel. So there is, uh, as I told you, a convoy of strikes on one line, and here it is a comparison between simulation and measurements. And we see that if you consider horizontal, array, uh, horizontal line or vertical line, and you calculate the medium correlation, you see that uh, if you compare theory and measurements, we have a rather good agreement, for example, for the, on the horizontal line, in theory, you have 0.7. Um, in the, during the measurements, we obtain 0.73 and so on. But once again, if you compare the red values and the black values as the vertical and horizontal lines, it, we, we have the same results. Thus, in presence of strokes or in an empty tunnel, the stronger the correlation is very high on a vertical line due to the fact that the tunnel is rectangular. Oh, sorry. Um, to go back, I don't know. Thus, I prefer to, to stay as it is. Thus, what we will compare? We will compare two, to calculate the capacity of this link, two possibilities. Either a beam forming technique. What is a beam forming technique? That you mean a beam towards the receiver. Since the tunnel is straight, the beam is very easy to construct. You add, you take the same information on the 60 elements in phase, and thus you have an array and an array gain. And that is, you see the, the curves, uh, the lower curves. The capacity here for a signal to noise ratio of 20 dB is about 20, 12 bit per second parallels. There is another possibility is that we call the singular value decomposition. What, is, what does it mean? That you send different information, but on the same frequency band. And thus, of course, uh, all these information are, are mixed. But by trying uh, to, by inverting uh, matrix and so on, you can extract the results. And thus, you increase the capacity because you send different information on the same frequency band. So what happened? I have four, in this case, I have four receiving antenna, and either 64 antenna, that is one, the, the gray, uh, one curve that you see on the slide, or eight. Why? Because uh, you, if you use the 64 antennas, you use 64 radio frequency chains. Or 
okay? This is a very high number of RF chains. Thus, it costs a lot of money. And uh, you see, but the results are worse that in the case of eight. Uh, with you, if you use only eight RF chain, but what I have done, simply for the vertical line, all elements which are vertical aligned, they are put in phase. Thus, I have only eight vertical uh, array. And you get best results. Why? Because in this case, you have an array gain on the vertical line, and it is better than you use uh, the global uh, so single value decomposition. So uh, what, uh, what is the practical conclusion of that? Before implementing a large MIMO system, which needs a large number of radio frequency chains, it is important to check the channel properties in order to know if uh, all the symmetry, all the correlation between elements are the same everywhere. Otherwise, you spend a lot of money for anything. So one can also calculate the axial correlation, the channel stationarity. Thus, to calculate the correlation, there are two means. Either you move to calculate the correlation between successive receiving elements, or you try to characterize the change in the statistics on the full H matrix. So how to do? Once again, I have represented here the transmitting array and the receiving array as air elements, for example, and we move, that is a receiver, a mobile, we move from an abscess C to another one, Z plus DZ. Of course, you do not receive the same, uh, the same field, and thus one can calculate the correlation coefficient between that which we see an abscess Z and an abscess Z plus DZ, and thus you can do that for the receiving one, and, and so on. Thus, you have air, capital air values, because there are capital air elements, and you, you can calculate the mean correlation coefficient between the array at the position Z, Z, and the array at the position Z plus DZ. And thus, we usually introduce that it is called the correlation distance, which is a displacement of the mobile to reach a given value of the mean correlation coefficient. And in the notation, for example, DC 0.7, what does it mean? It means that we move, if the mobile moves for this given distance, the correlation at one point and another one becomes equal to 0.7. The same, of course, on 0.9. Another possibility is called the channel stationarity. Thus, it's less intuitive. Thus, instead of characterizing the correlation between the array of the mobile array at a position and mobile array at an opposition, but elements after elements, now if you use that I have called previously the singular value de decomposition, it means that you send different information but on the same frequency band. It means that you have a um, mathematical, mathematical transformation to do. Thus, what is important is the change in the full transfer matrix. Thus, the channel matrix is characterized the, the, what we receive when we, uh, there is one element, transmitting element, one receiving element, and so on. And thus, if we want to see the change in the matrix, there is an approach which has been recently proposed by Erdi Network, which has been by the so-called correlation matrix distance. Thus, you calculate the correlation matrix between all elements at the receiver, you move the, receiver, uh, the transmitter, sorry, you move the mobile, and you calculate the distance between two matrices. How can we define the distance between two matrices with this element, with this uh, formula. Thus, it is a definition of the distance between the matrix uh, air calculated at abscess Z and the matrix air calculated at Z plus DZ. 
plus with disease definition, the distance we characterize the correlation between the two matrix uh, varies between zero and one, one corresponding to the maximum correlation. Thus, once again, we can define a stationary distance to reach this distance between these matrices. Thus, here are the results. That is the cumulative distribution function of either the correlation distance of the stationary distance when the mobile moves around the tunnel. For example, if for your system you assume that if you keep a correlation of 0.7, it means that the channel has not really changed, you find as a median value a correlation this a coefficient for a correlation coefficient 0.7, a distance of two meter for the stationarity distance of three pine. 0.5 meters. So within the stationarity distance, the channels you can estimate, so you have to prove that, that the channel statistics do not vary at research. So this is an important characteristic for optimizing the transmission scheme because you know that, for example, every three meters or something like that, the channel has changed and you it is to uh, change your precoding. Thus, you have to update periodically the precoding matrices, and thus the, it gives an idea of the periodicity of this precoding. Thus, as a conclusion, since we are here in a rectangular tunnel with the width is much larger than its height, it has a strong influence of the channel characteristics. For the massive array, thus, uh, there is a very high correlation between elements situated on the vertical line, a small correlation between four elements on the horizontal line. And there is this, if there is a need to partition the array, thus not to, to avoid a large number of radio frequency chains. Then we have shown that if the receiver moves in the tunnel, there is a change in the statistics to calculate the stationarity distance, just to know, as mentioned as an additional work. Now it is necessary to relate this distance of stationarity to the need of updating the precoding matrices and to see if you do not update the precoding matrix on time, what is the degradation on the channel performance in terms of channel capacity? Thus, it is important, but we will see uh, next time, to determine what is the relationship between this correlation and the degradation of the MIMO performance in order to update, when necessary, the precoding matrices for the transmission to get the best capacity the optimum capacity uh, by avoiding also complexity. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Are there any questions? Uh, I have one small question. Uh, your simulation is done in such a way that the tunnel has a straight line. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but what happens uh, normally Intro. Yes, of course. Uh, but uh, one can use exactly the same simulation too, because you see in a ray tracing you launch rays, and thus when you launch rays in the um, GPU, so the the card, uh, they calculate the intersection between a ray and uh -huh. a surface uh -huh. as uh, when you play uh, in, the, <laughs> in the code. And thus, it is not important. You follow the rays. And thus, you can exactly the same approach. But of course, I agree. Uh, here we have start with the uh, stride tunnel because it is easy. Uh, furthermore, in, in if the tunnel is empty, you can get um, an, analytical, an analytical solution. Thus, you can compare to check the simulation tool. And after that, we have added also um, trucks because we were not sure at all that the assumption of a metallic trucks will give rather a result compared to a real truck, which 
is not really metallic. But as you will you have seen the result between the theory and experiment. Uh, one kilometer. That's right, you know, under the ESCO. The ESCO is a large river in Belgium. <laughs> okay, okay, thank, thank you. you. It's necessary to export it or something. To yeah, I think. Um, do you have your uh, your presentation? Yeah, it's in the open presentation. Ah. Uh, maybe. Ah, but uh, I don't know how to use this.